We're now recording. Uh, so welcome to a uh, UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on Flipping Information Literacy in the Classroom. It's January 2023. We're, we're just getting into it. My name is Sam Harlow. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the online learning librarian. And I'm Jenny Dale. My pronouns are also she, her, hers, and I'm the head of research, outreach, and instruction in the libraries. Um, so I made this. Uh, I'll drop it in the chat if y'all want to follow along. Um, or if you want to save it for later, like I said, there are links. Um, I'll also send it out in the email to everyone who registered after the fact. Okay, so I think there's enough people here, right? We can do this. Um, at yeah, least it I will guide we me. Can where take the poll too. You and I, Sam, we can take it. Yeah, there you go. Um, so I'm just ask, I'm just seeing kind of where we're at with our definitions of what we think flipped flipping the classroom is. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and then just also to see what y'all want to learn today. Um, it's a small crowd, so uh, it's totally okay. If you prefer to use the chat, that's totally fine. Um, you can go to www.minty on your phone and use that code, or you can use the link I dropped in the chat. It should all work fine. Okay. So with the link in the chat, I'm going to go to my Mintimeter. Okay. So someone said shifting some direct instruction to be provided ahead of a class session. Yes, recorded lecture ahead of time. Great. Um, someone said, I'm not sure like the students have more of a teaching role. Yeah, it can be. So we're going to go over the definition of what we're kind of using in terms of flipped um, in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of y'all kind of nailed it in terms of usually it is giving people thing, giving your students stuff to do ahead of the um, class. Yeah, someone said front loading, right? And then using the uh, class time, whether virtual or in person, to do more activities um, in terms of touching the materials, uh, getting experience. Uh, so yeah, front loading. Yeah, like I said, I really like that. That that is exactly what it is. Front loading uh, work so that you spend time in the actual classroom. Um, um, doing whatever works for your student learning objective, objectives in terms of activities. Um, so we're going to really focus today on um, the library, right? We're, we're, we do these one-shot information literacy in sessions or we're embedded in courses. You know, we have a lot of different roles, but really in terms of research. And we're going to talk about what that means um, for people in case they don't know. Um, but, you know, our situation is a little bit different than, you know, teaching a fully for credit class the whole semester. So we're going to also talk about how what we do or what we're planning to do in some cases um, can go into that realm. Uh, okay, so someone I asked also, what are you hoping to learn today? So someone said some ideas for integrating it. Um, yeah, that's good. And like I said, we're hoping that we're going to go over like either what we're doing, or what we're planning on doing, um, and then we're going to have some time at the end, hopefully to talk a little bit through um, you know, ideas for the future and how all of us might do more flipping in the classroom. Okay. Thank you all for participating in that quick poll. Okay, so we're going to go over what we do, <coughs> excuse me, as library liaisons. We're going to talk about flipping, hybrid, blended. What's the difference between the three? Because I know that's something that um, we're all kind of talking about a lot in uh, this world we live in, right, the academia. We're going to talk about things that the library is doing in terms of online learning objects and um, online materials, particularly our research tutorials, our suite of research tutorials. And then we're going to go over specific examples of either what we're doing or what we're planning on doing uh, with both face-to-face -face classes and virtual classes, uh, you know, as, as models. Yeah, Shelby, uh, we were really feeling winter vibes when we made this presentation, so I'm glad you like it. Okay, so Jenny's going to talk about library liaisons. All right, yes. Yeah. So I, as the head of research, outreach, and instruction, am fortunate to be able to be the person who gets to supervise most of our library liaisons. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what liaisons generally offer, um, but but as Sam has a note here, like we're all different. We all have different approaches. Um, I, you know, I know 
Lori, I know you know your liaison well. Shelby, you are a liaison, you know, so we we all have different experiences with this. Um, but I just wanted we just wanted to give you kind of an overview. So here's a picture of some of our beautiful liaison faces. Um, we, yeah, we try to, one of the ways that we try to just sort of connect with students and faculty is just to make sure that we're really visible as much as we can be. Um, and the, in this case, like literally visible with our pictures. So our department in the library is called research, outreach, and instruction. And so that's, those are the three really big areas that our liaisons focus on. So with research, that's usually consultations with instructors, faculty, students, staff, really anyone um, who might have a more sort of in-depth research question. Um, and so like for some of us, well, really probably for most of us, that can run the gamut from oh, I am a student in a, in a 101 course and I need help figuring out what a peer-reviewed article is to, oh, I'm a faculty member writing a scholarly journal article and I need help locating this source. Um, so really, again, as liaisons, we, we get to work with a lot of different people on a lot of different things. Um, and that is part of what I love about it. Outreach, we in our um, uh, in our unit in the library host a lot of outreach programming, virtual, in-person. I mean, this is an example of some outreach that we're kind of doing. Um, these webinar series that Sam has um, been keeping up with for the last six years now, pretty much. Um, and then finally, instruction, which will be our focus area today. Um, we provide research workshops. We teach um, students, really, again, not just students, any learners, anyone who's interested, we teach um, research skills, we teach different uh, resources like Zotero, um, and then we really focus a lot on information literacy skills. So just with that kind of background in mind, and Sam mentioned this earlier, I, I'll, I'll say this as well, to give you some context um, to contextualize this, much of our instruction is still what we in the library world call one shot instruction, which typically means that it is integrated into your course. Uh, let's say, um, for example, uh, I just scheduled one for women's gender and sexuality studies 490, which is their capstone course. So what I'll be doing is having those students come to the library um, at the end of this month, and we will be talking a little bit about um, library resources, search strategies, and then having time actually for them to find some sources, ask questions that they might have. So I'll see them that one time. They can always come back to me individually, but for the most part, we're doing these sort of one-off, one-shot sessions. Um, and so what that means is that time is at, like, is at a premium um, because a lot of times those are 50 or 75 minutes once a semester. So one of the things that is really attractive to us is this idea of flipping the classroom to really extend some of the instruction that we can do. And so we'll talk here a little bit about what we mean by flipping the classroom. So I will say, um, just a personal anecdote, when people started talking um, in sort of pedagogy and instructional design circles about flipping the classroom, I was like, isn't that just homework? You know, I wasn't, I was like, this just sounds like normal stuff. Um, but as we saw, for those of you who were um, here for the Mentimeter poll that we did at the beginning, it, it's different, right? The idea is not just, oh, students are doing some reading ahead of time. That's not flipping. That's a pretty standard instructional model. What a flipped classroom is, and we like this definition from Harvard, um, it's structured around the idea that a lecture or direct instruction is not the best use of class time. Instead, students encounter information before class, freeing class time for activities that involve higher order thinking. And that last piece is really important um, because what we, what we can find when we look at really good examples of flipping is that instead of you needing to spend 75 minutes uh, of class time giving a lecture, um, which may or may not sort of rehash some of the things that you've asked students to read, you're actually giving them that experience outside of the classroom so that they ideally, and to, you know, we'll we know it doesn't always work. We know not everybody always does the flipped instruction beforehand, but 
ideally the students have encountered that information so they have sort of a baseline and when you're in the classroom together you can really move beyond that sort of um, recall level of uh, sort of basic understanding and give students the opportunity to really engage as they see here with this high these higher order types of thinking In the last few years, particularly um, since the start of the pandemic in particular, uh, there have been a lot of questions about like, what does this mean in the context of um, all these other things that we also have been talking about more, blended classrooms, hybrid classrooms, and flipped. We have um, these definitions from Temple University. So blended is typically going to be more like face-to-face -face sessions with online materials, right? So it's a, it's a blend. And this is a, a, like, these are not new concepts, right? These have been around for a long time. We just happen to have been talking about them a lot more over the past few years. Um, a blended classroom, I think, is a really good uh, a really good opportunity for flipping, but it doesn't have to be flipped. Um, a hybrid classroom, uh, they're often used kind of interchangeably as we have on the slide here, um, but they typically what hybrid means is like, let's say you have two instructional days, one might be online, one might be in person. Um, so again, that's also not really flipping because flipping is about, as we see here, sort of taking what would usually be covered in traditional instructional time and having that be something that students learners complete on their own time on their sort of homework time outside of class. So why are we as liaisons doing this? Well, I talked a little bit already about the time situation that we run into, which is um, and I don't know, maybe all educators are like this, but librarians and definitely myself included, like I just always want to be teaching one more thing or telling them one more thing like, oh, and by the way, did you know about interlibrary loan? And here's how our entire system works. Like it's kind of hard sometimes to restrain myself from all the stuff I'd like to teach. So time is always going to be an issue and being able to provide a lot of content um, ahead of time or sort of core content ahead of time is, you know, a big benefit of this. Um, we also can deal with or we have opportunities for assessment from students. We don't really get, you know, we don't have access to your quizzes or or your course assignments. So what we can do as as we're flipping is actually provide the content, have students do like a little quick form or quick check that we can see, make sure that they're on the same page with us. And then when they come in, um, when they come in to our actual one shot session, we have a sense then of like, are they understanding the content we've talked about, what needs to be reviewed, um, and what doesn't. So this really allows us a lot of opportunities um, to be able to uh, really cover, to truly cover the content that's most important for our students. And so again, since we're not instructors of record in, in these information literacy situations, we've got that one shot. One of the things we like is that this can be used with online sessions, face-to-face -face sessions. It, we have some examples where we'll talk about how you can blend synchronous and asynchronous, um, all kinds of things. And we also think it's really valuable for students to have time to connect um, to the assignment and like get in and touch the library resources so that it's not seeming to students like a theoretical, here's how library research would work. They're really seeing how it would work for them um, and, and looking at how it connects to their assignment, which most students want to get good grades on their assignments. They wanna be successful. Um, and so this can kind of, we can show them how our resources can really help with that. So um, yeah, let's know. That last question, let's move on. We're, I talk too much. Here we go. Oh, yeah, sorry about the um, those little noises. I uh, And people can um, answer this in the chat while I start presenting. Um, and Jenny, you can look at that. Um, yes, we'll thank you. From what, a great, what a great way to handle 
me talking too long, Sam. Thank no. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about what we do in terms of creating these online learning objects and um, tutorials about research um, so that uh, this can help us with the front loading. Um, it could also potentially help you with the front loading. Again, I'm just going to really embrace this word um, that comes with flipping. Um, so online learning objects, um, what we really use are something called research guides and other standalone tutorials that we create if they go out of the um, umbrella of research guides or sometimes referred to as lib guides or live guides, depending on who you're talking to. But we really use the term research guides um, the most when we're talking to our students, patrons, um, et cetera. So we have the ability as liaison librarians to make these research guides based on a concept, major, or courses. Um, so every major at UNCG has one. So like nursing has one. And then um, I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen these. You know, I know a couple of y'all are nursing professionals professors. So like nursing um, as a major has one made by Leah. And then there are courses that Leah works with that have one that are specific to the student learning objectives. Um, so these are available online as well as in Canvas through an LTI um, that we have turned on that there can be a library resources option um, on your left of your course navigation, your left hand course navigation uh, that kind of embeds them within your Canvas course. So from these guys, you can chat with a librarian and so on. So just in case you all haven't seen these, um, you can can locate them off of our library homepage under research guides by subject. So again, every major at UNCG is here. Um, and then if you go into one, I'll, I'll pick on um, my own ones that I've made. Um, I'm, of course, blanking kinesiology, right? You can see here's what I recommend for all kinesiology majors. And then any course I work with over the years um, has one here. So you can see if you go into lifetime wellness, right, it's more specific to their student learning objectives um, as well. So another thing about these research guides by subject is that we also have these additional research and resources guides. It's kind of hard to see that link, uh, but this has stuff like citation, um, citation management, um, distance learning, um, tutorials, um, as well as, you know, concepts like streaming film, um, which has forms to like suggest streaming films, ebooks, maker spaces. Again, all these different things we do in the library that go beyond majors. Um, so be sure to check that out or to uh, talk to your liaison librarian about what might work for your course. Um, so the other thing we have at UNCG that I wanted to showcase is um, standalone tutorials. So we as liaisons can create, of course, like a video, a guide, a presentation, right, on anything related to research that might go um, outside of the realm, you know, might, again, benefit a lot of people and have it online. So we try to collect them and put them here uh, so that we have a place as liaisons to go to and say, I need a video on uh, citation management. Uh, let's see if there's one out there. So these are a collect, this page is a collection of things that we've made here at UNC. CG libraries, as well as things we use as librarians from other one, um, other libraries. So for example, um, a really famous one that's used a lot in the library world is this peer review in three minutes. It's from um, NC State, um, but it's been used over and over again by a lot of librarians because it just really quickly and concisely covers the concept of peer review. Um, so you might see this being used by liaisons in their instruction on a research guide um, or put within Canvas, right, to to make a point about peer review. And this is just one example. Um, but you can see here, we also have stuff like that we've made, right? Like here's a peer review infographic that someone at UNCG libraries made, um, so on. So this is really meant to be used in consultation with your liaison, but you are this is also linked on your guide if you wanna um, talk, you know, play around with it and look here as well. Um, so the another thing that we have made over the years is something called, uh, we have rebranded it, renamed it, it's called Ultra, but it's our online suite of uh, research tutorials. So we um, did a naming competition with UNCG Libraries employees, um, and we came up with Ultra, which I think is nice, catchy, right? It's easy to remember, easy to say, uh, but this is a flexible suite of online modules on many concepts related to research. So they're based on our information literacy student learning objectives, which if you haven't checked out, you can check them out here just for the sake of time. I'm not going to go into them. So they're available online. 
Um, and you can uh, have your students log into our online system and get a certificate of completion or through Canvas Commons, where they come with quizzes that the questions are worth one point each and you can make them graded or for credit or adapt them to your student learning objectives um, through Canvas. So um, just to quickly showcase how this works, um, here it is, and I will drop this in the chat um, because this is a big um, thing we are going to talk about in terms of examples of how we flip our um, research and information literacy instruction. Uh, but really, uh, our learning goals are based on these concepts of find, evaluate, use, credit, create. Um, so there are categories in that. Um, as well. So there's a category of introduction to research as well as advanced research. And then within those categories, um, a tutorial is the blue ones, right? So like here is a tutorial on the research project that is comprised of modules. Y'all don't have to remember this. <laughs> um, the main thing that is uh, important to kind of acknowledge about this system uh, is that to get a certificate of completion through the website, you do have to do every module in a tutorial. So if I wanted my students to hand me um, or send me a certificate of completion to prove that they did the research process, they have to take each module in this and there is a quiz at the end of each module that they have to complete. So to do that, they have to be logged into the system here in the upper right through their UNCG credentials. Um, so notice like for the credit ones, we do have them broken up in that they could do a module, a tutorial on credit and APA where they would have to take the plagiarism and citation module, uh, but then they have one specific to the APA style here. And we have one for APA Chicago MLA. So that's just an example of how this can be used flexible in a flexible way. But note that like a liaison could also take right pieces of this and move it into Canvas from Canvas Commons and adapt it for a nursing course, for example, um, for a um, English course. Um, and then they could edit it or you could edit it within Canvas uh, to match what you're trying to do in terms of assignments. Uh, so Canvas is another great option um, beyond the website as well. Okay, so now we're going to go into some ex examples of flipping the classroom. So um, I will hand it back over to Jenny. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, a course that I work with really regularly, CST 300, which is communication theory. Um, and I have a screenshot here that is the uh, research module that I have created for this course, which is available in Canvas. Um, and so it can stand alone. And that's one of the things that I want to want to mention. Um, this can totally stand alone. It doesn't have to be flipped, but it, ideally it is. Um, so ideally students have completed this ahead of time, um, which goes through some of the like main sort of uh, important points that I would usually cover in a class session. So this is a required course for all CST, all Comm Studies majors, um, and it is a course that they dread um, in, in general. Um, one of the big things that, that this course focuses on in terms of research skills is being able to identify and find primary uh, research articles. So, you know, original research, how that's being reported. Um, and that's something that's usually a pretty new concept to students. So the research workshop that I typically do, which is a one-shot session, either synchronously online or in person, um, connects with a library research worksheet that they have been completing in this course for years and years. Um, so there's a ton of content to cover. To complete that worksheet, they need to be able to search the catalog, identify primary research articles, find their own primary research article, cite those sources and others in APA style. So there's a lot that I'm trying to cover in these courses. So one of the things that's really advantageous just about flipping in a situation like this, especially when that idea of primary or peer um, primary research or uh, primary source articles, as we also talk about them in this particular case, with that being such a new concept to a lot of students, um, flipping the content really makes it easy for me to be able to focus in on that during a class session and give students time to actually find the stuff they need and say, hey, I think this is a primary research, but like, can you tell me for sure kind of thing? So that's just one example. Oh yeah, 
this one I'm talking about as well. Sorry. Uh, this is for Art History 360. Our um, uh, Visual Art and Humanities Librarian, Maggie Murphy, shared this with us. This is something that she's going to be doing this semester, which we were excited to hear about. So students in this course are researching female animators and developing these sort of timelines about their careers. Um, so they are going to do the Searching Strategies Ultra module, and you know, Sam talked about Ultra, ahead of time. And that way students can um, have some of the basics about searching so that Maggie as the librarian isn't trying to cover both searching and evaluating the copyright status of images at the same time. This way they have a little bit of that background knowledge. They can apply that to this activity where they are doing a little bit of formative assessment around finding and understanding the copyright status of something. Um, and they're going to be using books as well as online sources. So that's why that searching strategies module is going to be really ideal for them. Okay, and the last one I'm going to talk about is actually the class that gave me the inspiration to really um, do more flipping in my uh, research instruction. Um, so this is a graduate level kinesiology class, psychology of sports and exercise, um, where I had a 60 minute uh, one shot with them, right, a one time of me as a librarian going in um, to their um, session. And 60 minutes might seem like a long time to talk to students, but really it goes by really quickly when we're covering a lot of stuff. So they, as grad students, had a final assignment of an annotated bibliography on something related to sports um, psychology, um, exercise and psychology. Um, so they needed to understand the basics of the library website. What is an annotated bibliography? Um, how to search for peer-reviewed scholarly articles on um, psychology of sports and exercise, um, as well as citing them and citation management since they're in a uh, grad level course and many of them are writing dissertations. Uh, so this is a screenshot of, you know, like a my the slideshow I use for this course where we go over creating keywords, um, right, of um, that um, using PICO, which uh, again, a lot of y'all are in the health sciences, so you know what PICO is, um, and then going from there to start doing searching. Um, so the way I did this um, last semester in the fall was that we did a poll at the beginning, we did a homepage tour, we went over a research guides by subjects um, and then went to their course guide. Then I went back to the slides and we talked about annotated bibliography versus a literature review, make sure they understood the difference. We talked about evidence-based practice, PICO, um, and then creating keywords that then would be used within library database and article searching. Then we did article searching showing the difference between Schol Google Scholar and then Sport Discus and PubMed. Um, as many of y'all know, since you are nursing faculty, uh, PubMed and Sport Discus are different interfaces. So I did show both of them. Uh, I had an example. We used depression and football players. Um, and then we talked quickly about citations, including citation creation using ZBIB and then citation management. So we had an activity planned that I totally ran out of time for, did not get to it. They did not get to really touch the stuff. And then a final assessment. So a lot of these one shots do have a final assessment where we ask the students, how do we think it went. Um, so as you all can tell, the reason I put this out there is that it's just so much stuff for 60 minutes. Um, and of course, I ran out of time because it was just like so much to cover. People asked questions, people were really engaged. So we had no time to actually search for articles or create citations because this form did have them um, find an article on, you know, a topic related to uh, sports psychology and uh, exercise, um, and then uh, create a citation from it. So in the final assessment, more than one student was like, you should consider flipping this because I would have really loved to have time to really like search with you in the room, right? So like they kind of gave me what I thought, knew, already knew um, what it was going to do. So the ideas of flipping this um, really were, um, and I'm going to try it uh, the next time they ask me to go to it, is that send them the ultra modules of, um, we have one on annotated bibliography, navigating the library website, citations um, and Zotero, um, right? Um, so then they'd have kind of a basis of um, that stuff. And then I would really just spend my time talking about searching strategies within PubMed and Sport Discus. Um, and then we could really give them time to do searching within PubMed and Sport Discus um, while I am there to help. Um, and then still have time to wrap up, right? So this kind of breaks it down into the time I could actually spend in class, right? 15 minutes doing a kind of demo and then 30 minutes to have them I'm really touching the stuff with me there to, um, you know, help them with any issues they're having. So that's my idea. 
um, for that as well. So to wrap it up, because, um, you know, Jenny and I love to talk about this stuff, so I know we're like right at time. Uh, but here are links to two resources at UNCG. Um, we are, of course, not instructional technologists, instructional designers. We are librarians just talking about our experiences of flipping. Uh, but you do have a ton of support. Um, and here are links to the University Teaching and Learning Commons and Faculty Development. They're going through a library, uh, a reboot of their website. Um, so I'm sure there's even more stuff coming on there, more programming, things like that, um, as well as here's a page to find your academic technology specialist or ATS. Um, in case you didn't know, the, they used to be ITCs, but their name has changed uh, with uh, some of the online learning changes at UNCG. Uh, so they're now called ATSs. Uh, I think Morgan is here, right? Um, she had to jump off a little bit early, but Morgan is the Bryan School uh, ATS now. Um, and there's maybe others. If there's one I missed on here um, that can support with flipping resources at UNCG, uh, definitely let me know. And that's it. So are there any um, questions, comments, concerns? Um, also like ideas for flipping? Um, are y'all flipping? Do you like it? I've heard a lot of talk from the UTLC about hybrid, but not as much about flipping. So I didn't know if people were like seeing it or trying it this semester. Um, again, as Jenny and I talked about, we're going to be trying it more this semester. We have definitely heard students say they they want more time in classes to do activities with our stuff. I was just wondering because I've never had the chance to like teach an entire class before, but for some classes that are like what like two three hours long in the evening, if this mm -hmm. is a way to shorten those classes if like that's okay like aren't instructors allowed like they don't have to use the entire three hours or is it mandatory I, I was never sure about that so I think instructors have a lot of freedom in terms of their use of that class time um and so I think that in some situations something like flipping might might be used in that way, um, but that also might be considered more hybrid um, if you approached it in that way, because it's the expectation, even if you let kind of let class out early, is that you are still providing, you know, three hours a week of instructional time. Um, so it kind of depends on how uh, an instructor or professor is um, interpreting what that instructional time means. So not really a clear answer, but it, uh, it depends. My favorite <laughs> answer to everything. <laughs> okay, yeah, because yeah, honestly, I'm not sure if I entirely know if I like. Because I know you said that there's a difference between like just giving reading beforehand or just preparing beforehand, but like I was thinking like for SCUA related classes, um, like because I always see them presenting slides on like how to um, handle um, mm -hmm. primary resources and how to search through them. Like maybe it's, instead of like presenting that in a class, maybe turning that into a, a module and like giving that to students beforehand so that they would have more time yeah. in the class to just like mm -hmm. actually do it or maybe like work on like more stuff like with yeah you. I mean I think that's like a perfect example of what you just said of something where um it's really important content it has to be covered um particularly in a situation like that where you're like I don't want people just willy-nilly touching all the fancy stuff that we have in special <laughs> collections right but um having that sort of ahead of time then does really free up time for exploration, um, for activities, for, you know, for like students to actually like get in and look at some of the resources. So I think that's like a, like a perfect example of you, that you just gave of like a really good opportunity for flipping. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, we're using ultra and as an example in a lot of ours and Jenny showed like, you know, a kind of an adapted Canvas module, like, you know, again, liaisons are their own people. They have their own ideas of how to teach, how to, what's best for the discipline. So, you know, like uh, every liaison knows what's best um, in terms of information literacy for their areas. Um, so like, you know, just, I keep talking about nursing because I see Stephanie and Laurie here, but like, you know, like uh, nursing, um, you could use, you know, like, 
continuing education nursing modules online, right, to flip and then use the classes to do more lab time um, or, um, you know, activities related to the learning objectives. Um, it doesn't have to be like we're using ultra as an example in this context of information literacy. Um, but, you know, like uh, you might talk to a liaison and they might say there's actually not an ultra module that matches what I'm trying to do, you know, in terms of flipping. And they might say, I'm going to record myself going over this. Like I, as the online learning librarian, as well as like just working within my um, liaison areas, uh, might like record myself in Zoom you know, doing some searching specific to their topic, right, to their course. Um, and then, um, again, like, uh, use live time, whether in Zoom or in the classroom, actually, like, searching for their topic, right, and again, being with them. So, like, it, you know, it just depends on the situation. I've done both. I've used Ultra, or I'm going to, you know, I... I haven't really used ultra that much to flip lately because, you know, the pandemic meant I was just sending people ultra stuff, getting into Canvas and adapting it. Um, but now that there is more in person, now that there is more live sessions where people can come, um, you know, like Zoom or in person, then I'm I'm trying to do this more. It's an idea for the future. Any other comments, questions, things you want me to show you? Um, I know we're a little over time. My clock is always like weird. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we were excited to talk about this and we're hoping also to use it. We've kind of suggested this to use it to inspire ourselves yeah. <laughs> as we go into this semester. As you saw, I mean, that was part of why uh, I came up with this topic is I was like, this will make me really think through what I'm going to be flipping this year. Um, another one I'm planning on flipping is a public health course um, that is related to research. It's a research public health course. So it's an undergrad course though. So I, I think I might do it a little bit differently, of course, than what I talked about for the graduate kinesiology course. Okay, y'all. Well, thank you for coming. Um, it's Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. Um, I have to always remind myself of what day it is. Um, <laughs> and everyone have a great week. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.